If you enjoy this video, be sure to like and comment below and subscribe to our channel for more awesome collector videos. Hey everybody, it's Anthony from Collector Archive Services. And as part of our Collecting Star Wars series, I thought it'd be fun to put together a video about this guy, Blue Snaggletooth. In my years of collecting Star Wars, there have been a number of things I've learned about this figure. I thought it'd be fun to share. Um, and in the process, I'm gonna tell you about a Blue Snaggletooth related piece that happens to be my favorite piece in my entire collection, and it happens to be a CAS graded piece as well. Um, so if you like this video or you find it useful, definitely hit the like button. Um, if there's a comment, definitely leave it below. I love to start a conversation about it. And if you like videos like this, subscribe to our channel because we'll be putting out a lot more content just like this. So without any further ado, um, the five facts about Blue Snaggletooth that I learned in my years of collecting Star Wars. Blue Snaggletooth fact number one. Kenner designed the Blue Snaggletooth figure based off of a studio photo from Lucasfilm that depicted the character basically from the waist up. They were probably working off something very similar to this if this is not the actual photo that they were using. They had very little input as to how tall the character should be, what color wardrobe he was wearing, and so when Kenner designed the figure, they made him the standard three and three quarter inches in size. Uh, they gave him a blue spacesuit and these pretty sweet silver space boots. It wasn't until after the figure came out and he was released in sets that we'll talk about later in this video that Lucasfilm took uh, issue with the appearance of the character and changes were made. Uh, blue Snaggletooth was changed, as we know, to Red Snaggletooth. He was a shorter figure that actually measured three inches in size. His suit was changed, obviously, from blue to red. And unfortunately, he lost the moon boots, but I can understand that because he was able to show off his beautiful coat of red toenail polish. Blue Snaggletooth fact number two. So unlike Red Snaggletooth, Blue Snaggletooth was never released on a card back. And there were only two ways you could possibly get him in 1978. And they were both through um, the Sears 1978 Holiday Wish Book. Um, what's most commonly known is that it was offered in the Cantina Adventure set, which was a play set, but essentially a cardboard backdrop and base with little white pegs to position figures. But the big thing was it came with four new Star Wars figures following the original 12. And we know them, Blue Snaggletooth, Greedo, Hammerhead, and Walrus Man. Um, and it retailed for $8.77. Uh, and that was one of the ways you can get Blue Snaggletooth back in 1978. Um, I gotta say, you gotta love some of the writing in the Sears uh, wish book. Uh, above the cantina ad, it, it reads, uh, if you stop at this cantina, watch out for strangers. Just so you know. Blue Snaggletooth fact number three. In addition to the cantina adventure set, there was one other way to get a Blue Snaggletooth back in 1978. And that was also through the Sears uh, wish book. It was a Sears exclusive and it was a two pack. Blue Snaggletooth came with Rita. And for $3.66, you can get a two pack of the two figures. A Walrus Man and Hammerhead two pack existed as well. Um, and that brings me to a great story about one of my favorite pieces in my collection. A couple years back, I was able to uh, purchase sealed two packs. One of Blue Snaggletooth, uh, and Greedo, and the other one was of Hammerhead and Walrus Man. The funny thing is that a year later, 1979, Sears offered these two packs again, but instead of blue, they had red Snaggletooth in the two pack, and the serial number was exactly the same. Um, I knew the seller, he assured me, he traced the history of this box back to the original owner. It was, in, you know, as far as he knew, definitely a blue Snaggletooth. The box, the box actually is labeled in pen, blue snaggletooth, if that makes it feel better. Um, but in good faith, I trusted the seller and I bought the two. A friend of mine suggested that I have an x-ray and I be able to tell whether it was blue or red. And I thought that was an awesome idea. And a friend of mine is an x-ray tech and he did that for me. And as you can see, the x-ray clearly shows that the snaggletooth is just as tall as Greedo. So this is in fact a blue snaggletooth. Uh, and of course, I talked to CAS about displaying the white department store box next to the x-ray 
they came up with this awesome display idea. And um, I think it looks awesome. I mean, this is a box you never want to open, right? Because there's who knows how many of these sealed boxes actually exist. Why open this one? This is a great way to display it upright and basically show the contents or at least the, uh, the x-ray of the contents. Blue Snaggletooth fact number four. Number four is a quick one, but I think it's really cool. It's a pretty cool factoid about the figure. Uh, if there's one aspect about Blue Snaggletooth that gets all the attention as far as his wardrobe goes, it's his silver moon boots, right? Uh, but my fact number four has to do with his belt buckle. Uh, I'm gonna include a link below uh, that shows the original blueprint of the design of this figure. And what's cool to note is that the, the designer used a logo from his old business card to design the belt buckle. And it remained on the red snaggletooth variation as well. Blue snaggletooth fact number five. Folks, if you liked the video so far, please hit the like button below. And if you have something to add, leave a comment because we would love to hear from you. Okay, so my number five fact about Blue Snaggletooth. Um, if you collect into Star Wars, you know you know that there are two variations of Blue Snaggletooth. Uh, there is the dent and toe and the non-dent and toe variation. And as you can see here, on the uh, front of the right boot, right over where the big or great toe would be, there's a little dimple <clears throat> on the dent and toe variation. While it's pretty commonly known amongst collectors, my question is why? Why is there a dent and toe variation? In my research on the topic, um, I found that there's no definitive answer. There seems to be a couple theories out there, two main ones, and they tend to contradict each other. I think the more commonly accepted explanation is that there were normal molds that didn't have dent and toes over time, a certain batch of molds or just one mold happened to get some debris lodged in the right boot portion of the mold and then subsequent runs of the figure had a dimple where that debris was which became the dent and toe but if you dig a little further and do a little more research you'll find that there are some collectors that have first shots of loose nagel tooth that have a dent and toe and if they are in fact first shots they're the first run of the figures off the molds and so what that tells you is that some molds maybe had that defect from the very beginning. So what was it? Which theory do you think is more probable? Leave a comment below, let us know what you think. And uh, again, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you enjoy collector videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. And uh, until the next one, keep collecting my friends.